let's say you want an introduction to philosophy, but you don't want a textbook, right? You don't want to have to sit down and do a class. You just want something that's going to blow your mind. What kind of book should you get? I would recommend... Hello Philosophers, welcome to the Philosopher's Bookshelf, where we review books that are philosophically interesting. Today I have a book for you called, What Does It All Mean? A Very Short Introduction to Philosophy by Thomas Nagel. Thomas Nagel is a very well-known philosopher. Uh, he teaches at NYU, American philosopher, uh, born in Yugoslavia actually. Uh, I think uh, the area he was born in is now Serbia. And anyway, he's a very well-known philosopher. He's written books, uh, most recently, Mind and Cosmos. Um, his, his most famous essay was, What Is It Like to Be a Bat? Uh, I'll, I'll put a, a link. You can get that one for free, by the way. Uh, so uh, if you want to read that. Uh, it's, he's an interesting guy because he is an atheist philosopher who critiques uh, the uh, materialist perspective uh, of mind. The, the perspective that would say that there is no, like, non-physical mind, that it's all just brain matter. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to take a stand on either side, but uh, that's why he's interesting, because, I mean, he he was bold. The, the, the people, you know, the other atheist philosophers just assaulted him for that. <laughs> and, it, it, I mean, they, they treated him like, you know, stab in the back. Um, so he, he's a bold guy that's that's willing to... to uh, present the other ideas and consider them. That's one of the things that I really respect about this guy. Um, yeah, so um, I really enjoyed this book. Um, it was a book, it wasn't written for me, actually. It was written for people who, he, he says in the introduction, have no idea what philosophy is. Um, he thinks that probably it would be for, col uh, probably college age and above students, you know, and above would would be reading it, but he thinks that he says uh, intelligent high school students with a, a, a taste for abstract ideas would also uh, he, he thinks that it would uh, be good for them. I think so too. I mean, I, I've, I've you know I've seen a lot of students, and I, I think this would be a, a great introductory for a high schooler, you know, as well as a college student. Um, yeah, and and what I really like about this book is uh, the way that he goes about it. He doesn't try to tell you, you know, what Plato says about this and what, or he's not worried about history of philosophy or uh, a, a lot of the things that a lot of philosophers get boggled down with, which is, uh, boggled down, bogged down with, um, which is stuff like who said what, you know. Um, this is not a, uh, this is kind of funny. Uh, I'm going to tell you that John Searle, I remember recently reading a book where he, he mentions how ridiculous it is that philosophy has gotten to the point where you always have to say who said what. And, and here I am telling you that John Searle said it. I don't know why that I should say that. And also my light just went out. Um, yeah, so um, I like uh, I like the idea. He, he approaches it uh, by not worrying about who said what, but by... Uh, presenting to you nine philosophically interesting questions, nine big questions that philosophers worry about. Um, and I think he does a really good job of keeping everything um, pretty uh, neutral. You know, I mean, he definitely, a couple of times he, tell, he says, you know, I, I can't see how anybody would believe this, but um, he, he uh, for the most part, you know, just, gives equal treatment to all the ideas. And, uh, I, I was really impressed, you know, um, it, it's not an easy thing to do, uh, to, to keep yourself out of it, to not sneak your own philosophy. in. in fact, recently I was reading a book, uh, what was it? Pigliucci. That's right. Uh, Pigliucci who, who, who wrote a book, uh, recently about, um, what, 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 what was it? I started reading it and I haven't, haven't finished it yet. It was um, arguing why philosophy is still legitimate, even though it doesn't seem like philosophy gets anywhere, that it does get somewhere. Um, and 
the, the thing that I remember in reading this book, he, he says something like, um, well, philosophers do tend to agree on some things. So, for example, they all, you know, or at least most of the, almost all philosophers agree that uh, Cartesian dualism is, uh, is uh, untenable. And I read that and I'm like, what? You mean, except for all the Cartesian dualists? You know, <laughs> now that's a joke that's going to make fun, make sense to nobody. I apologize. A little bit of philosophy humor. Um, yeah, that, uh, I'm not a Cartesian dualist, but Cartesian dualists believe that that we are a soul that's using a body. We're a ghost in a machine. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not a dualist, like I said. I'm, I'm a hylomorphist, which, I don't know, maybe some philosophers will think that's very, very close or close enough. But um, I, I don't tend to think that I, I need to defend the dualists. And I, I still, I felt like, what? You know, you, are you just going to sweep away all these duelists by saying, you know, like, oh, those ones aren't important. I, I was impressed with Nagel because he, he treats everybody really fairly. Um, and that, that's one of the things I think that are important, you know, like you want to see uh, what are all the options and you don't want to get, you know, this, this one-sided, you know, persuasion. Uh, so I really like Nagel's book uh, because of that. I would say, how successful is he in getting his uh, his goal? His goal being to uh, give you a taste of philosophy, even if you're not a philosopher, even if you've never even heard of philosophy. I'm saying ten out of ten, man. Like I, I really like this book. The questions are interesting, um, options you've never thought about before, and probably some that you you know you a couple of times questions that you've asked yourself. And, and he presents them clearly as a philosophy teacher. I really liked it because um, he, he does so without jargon. And uh, he, I think uh, in a very concise and easy to understand way where I think us philosophers tend to just get really, you know, uh, complicated. And when you're, when you're explaining to students, it, you, you need to cut through all that junk, you know, and be able to explain to them in a way that's easy to understand. I mean, having said that, I, this is not a textbook, so uh, don't treat it as a textbook. If you're a philosophy teacher, I think it would be a great book to recommend, but I don't think it would be a great book to use for a class, um, unless it would like a, like maybe a world views class, you know, something like that's not academic philosophy. That's just you know, let, let's let's kick around some ideas, and then it'd be a great book. Um, yeah, I think um, I, I don't know that I've ever read a book, uh, an introduction to philosophy that is like this book. So if I were to compare it to other books uh, in the category uh, of just like intro to philosophy uh, for uh, for a non-textbook, I would say this is probably the best I've read. I, I don't agree with Nagel on a lot of stuff, um, but I, I, yeah, again, I, I didn't feel like my, my perspective was ever, you know, given less time than the other ones. I did feel like in, in his final chapter on, on the meaning of life, um, I felt like he didn't, uh, un uh, well, I, I felt like he didn't appreciate the bleakness of, of some of the conclusions there. Um, I felt like if, if you're going to say that there is no meaning of life, that's a, that's a big statement, you know? Um, and, uh, it, it can't just be done away by looking at, um, oh, you know what, I, I, you know what you should do? Check out my video on that, uh, meaning of life, uh, philosophy can help. And, uh, and I have a, a little bit more on the, on the blog, philosopher.com, thephilosopher.com. Um, and, and I talk a little bit about that meaning of life. Um, but, uh, I think other than that chapter, I felt like he, he was very open and honest and, and, and really wanted to understand the things himself. And he helped us understand it. One chapter I found really interesting was his chapter on death. Um, Nagel makes a good point that, uh, fear of death is just as puzzling as death itself. You know, if, if you don't survive death, if you believe that, that you don't exist after death, then there's really nothing to fear because you, you're not going to be around to, you know, to, to experience anything. It's not, you're not going to be able to suffer at all because there's going to be nothing, you know. It's not like you're going to be sitting there just thinking like, ah, I don't exist. Dang, this stinks, you know. You, you're not even going to be there to, to, to worry about it. Um, yeah, Socrates a long time ago made the point that, or well, he said that he thought that if we don't 
survive death and it would be like the best sleep you ever had. And I, I don't know that that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's not like it's going to be like a pleasurable thing. It's going to be like just nothing, you know, like you won't exist. Um, yeah. So if you don't exist, I, th there's really nothing to be uh, scared of. I thought, I, I think, uh, I think he's right about that. And that, that's an interesting question why people would be scared. I do think there is a, uh, um, in philosophy of religion, there's an interesting uh, debate about, uh, Pascal's wager. If you've, you don't need to really know all that much about it. I'll just explain it to you, which is, and Nagel makes this point. If we do survive death, now we have something to fear, you know, like what happens when we survive death? Uh, are we punished for not doing something, you know, in this, in this world or something? Now, l let's say you survive death and you have punishment for an eternity, you know, whatever that would be. Um, and then, uh, typically gamblers will, look at the payoff and uh, compare that to the percent chance of winning and compare that also with the, uh, the, the price of the ticket and then that's how you tell if you should make the gamble or not. Um, now let's say you got like an eternity of, of reward for, for living a particular way uh, and eternity for a punishment for living a different way. Um, well, an eternity of, of any kind of, of reward would be an infinite reward, and an eternity of any kind of punishment would be an infinite punishment. So uh, even if it was like a 1% chance that you survived death, um, it would seem like that, you know, the infinite payoff w would uh, cause it to be worth whatever gamble. That's the, that's the debate in, in philosophy of religion. Uh, I've read a little bit about I don't know a ton about it. I've read a little bit about it, and uh, I've... I've I'm not a statistician either, so I don't know that much about it, but it's a fascinating idea. So uh, let me know what you thought about the book in the comments, um, and if you if you get to check it out. If you see any other good books, by the way, any good other good intros to philosophy that you really like, let me know, and uh, and let me know if there are any books that you want me to review, uh, not and not just you know philosophy books, also uh, fiction books that have philosophical interest. I, I'm 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 curious about that as well. I've got some really good ones that, that we'll eventually get to that I'm excited about talking about different ideas in the books that are, that are fiction books. Anyway, please uh, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check out my good reads, by the way, for even more, uh, more uh, suggestions on, on some good books. And I'll see you next time. Adios.